So in this video, I wanna go over how I went into the studio and tried to recreate a similar look, how I lit it, how I shot it, what my settings were, what lights I used, and everything in between. And if you stick around to the end, I'll show you the editing secret that gives this image a very gritty but polished look. I think the best way to learn photography and photography lighting is by deconstructing images you love. I fell in love with this GQ cover shoot years ago, shot by the incredible Jack Bridgeland. His work is very edgy, colorful, and nostalgic. All things I love in a photograph. However, I had no clue how this was shot. I wasn't on set with him when he shot this, and trust me, I scoured the internet looking for behind the scenes photos or videos just so I could see a glimpse into how this was shot, but I didn't find anything. Now, I'm not saying this is the exact lighting setup that Jack used in this shoot. However, this is how I would approach a similar shoot and how I try to get a similar vibe with my photo. One thing I did know about Jack is that he likes to use a Profoto Octabox right in front of the model's face, kind of high up and at like a 45 degree angle. So that's where I started. I have a three foot Profoto Octabox that I put on a Profoto D1 and I put it right on my model's face, just slightly above. And this gave really great highlights on the forehead and on the face, and then a nice shadow under the chin. Now, while shooting this, I used a white backdrop, but what I had was on the ground to the left side of the model facing the backdrop was another Profoto D1. And this one, I put a blue gel on. I hit it at the backdrop at an angle and this gave me a really cool blue gradient on the backdrop. But one thing I noticed is that I needed my model to stick out a little bit more from the backdrop. So what I did was added two more lights. One Profoto D1 with a four foot strip box with grid on the left side of the model, giving just like a nice rim light on his side. And on the other side, I used another Profoto D1 with a 20 inch grid bare bulb. Now, if I did this again, I would probably just put a four foot strip box with grid on the other side. Now, I love the way it was looking, but the shadows were so harsh and so dark. And I knew I wanted my image to be a little bit brighter. I wanted the model's skin and face to pop even more. So what I decided to do was add a fill light, but not a regular fill light. I used another Profoto D1 and I put a beauty dish on it. And this I put directly in front of the model, about right under their chin and shot it directly at them. I had it just below my camera. What this did was it gave a lot of brightness and highlight to the chest area and it lit up that shadow underneath the model's face. Now, the one thing about this setup is that it looks really boring before any editing. If you look at this raw photo, it's very boring. It's not eye-catching, it's not colorful, it's not dramatic, it's not edgy. So at first I was like, what am I doing? Uh, I had no clue. I thought maybe I just screwed the whole thing up. However, I played around in Lightroom and Photoshop and I was able to get a really cool image with really simple editing. First three things I increased was the contrast, the highlights, and the shadows. I dropped the blacks down a bit and then I lowered the texture and clarity. Now here's the thing. I really never touch texture or clarity when I'm editing images, but this is kind of what I liked about this shoot. I was playing around, I was trying things I had never tried before. Now the secret to this image, I believe, is the increased dehaze, if that's how you say it. Now I've never touched dehaze ever in Lightroom before. I truly didn't even know what it was. But after I decreased the clarity and the texture a bit, the dehaze just gave this new life to the skin. I felt like it made it really polished, but also gritty looking at the same time, and almost gives like a cartoonish look to it. Now, with just a few edits, this photo went from a really boring image to something colorful, edgy, and a lot more contrast. One thing I also did was I took 
the hue of the blue and I changed it to a purple. Now in the original GQ cover shoot it is a blue gradient backdrop. However, in my image, when I changed it to purple, I just felt like it was a stronger image. I liked how saturated that purple looked and to me it looked a little better than the blue. Now one thing I always do is shoot both on digital and film. I love my Mamiya RZ67. It's a medium format film camera and I'm still really learning how to use it. So before this shoot, I knew I was probably gonna be using at least four to five lights. So I thought, okay, I'll just use Portra 160. And I'm pretty sure I regret that decision. These images are still cool. I still like them. It gives a really gritty uh, film vibe, very different than the digital images. However, in my head, how I pictured these turning out, I know I could have got closer with if I used Portra 400. So I think I learned my lesson. I'm gonna be sticking with Portra 400 from now on. In these film photos, I use the exact same editing technique that I used in the digital photos. In these film photos, I didn't change uh, the blue color to purple. I felt like it didn't look that great on the film and I just kept them at blue just to have something different. All right, that's exactly how I try to recreate this GQ cover shoot. I would love to hear your thoughts on how you think I did, if you like it, if you absolutely hate it, uh, or if you are ever gonna try this lighting setup yourself. Thank you for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to my channel. There's only a few videos, but I'm excited to create more. And I'd love to hear also in the comments if you have any ideas or anything you'd like to see.